Hi everyone, I'm Whitney and I post sewing tutorials and inspiration here on Whitney Sews. Last week I started making a memory bear for a friend and it was very unlike any of the memory bears that I had made before. So I decided I wanted to film the process and share the tutorial with you all and that's what I'm here to do today. If you haven't seen already, I do have a lot of memory bear videos already on my YouTube channel as well as some on my Facebook page and I cover everything from picking out a good memory bear pattern all the way to the finishing stitches and just about everything in between and I will have all of those videos in a playlist that you can find in the video description box down below. So what made this bear so different than the ones I have done before is the fact that it was made from a preemie outfit. So a preemie outfit or a preemie sleeper to be more specific is a baby outfit that fits a smaller than a typical newborn baby. So it is quite small. Because the outfit is so small, it just n does not give me much material to work with. The bears I typically make are 18 inches tall, and this sleeper in its entirety was about 12 inches long. I knew I wanted to make as much use of the material as possible because this was for a very um, specific situation and I know this is a very special outfit for them. So I spent a really long time trying to figure out how to make the most use out of this one newborn sleeper and then three receiving blankets that to be honest, did not match. Um, so after about a month of considering on how to cut this up and make the most use of it, I finally realized that I just was not going to cut the outfit at all. I was going to use it as is and only add arms and a face to create the entire bear. I will be honest with you up front that this is not as straightforward and foolproof as a regular memory bear. Um, on the other memory bears I show how to do, if you prep the fabrics right and you cut the right pieces, sew them in the right order, you're going to have a good bear at the end. This one's not as straightforward, but we all know that sometimes there are those situations where you have a particular um, article of clothing that is so special to you that that is what you need to use. And if you are in that case and you have a um, little premature outfit that you need to use, then um, maybe consider following this tutorial and giving it a try. The pattern that I'm using in this video is the Simplicity 2115 It's So Easy um, bear pattern that is found at Walmart. It has been technically discontinued. They have reissued it recently under a McCall's pattern. Um, it's the exact same pattern. And then um, you can also go online and find the Simplicity Rare Bear pattern that is the even newer printing. Um, that one comes in two different sizes. I will have all of that information, the pattern numbers and everything down below in the description box, as well as the link to the one that's available online and links to any other supplies that I show or use in this video. Um, that way you'll have as much help as you possibly can when you go into making this. I started by prepping all the head and arm pieces the same way as shown in my step-by-step -step memory bear tutorial. If you have not seen that video yet, please watch it and make a test bear before attempting this one so that you already know up front how all of these pieces go together and you have some more confidence about putting them together before you risk using those oh-so-special supplies and materials that cannot be replaced. I'm using two of the receiving blankets as my materials and you can see here all the pieces that need to be prepped, the arms and all the head pieces. Start by sewing the ears and head together the same way it would be for any bear. Every curved seam that is sewn needs to be clipped so that it will look nicer in the finished bear. Do this by cutting small clips in the seam allowance, being careful to not cut across the thread line. Flip the ears right side out and add a bit of stuffing inside. Sew close to the edge to close up the ears. Onto the face. I'm actually using the reverse side of one of the receiving blankets so it will match better. So the white side is now the good side and the footballs are on the inside. I just wanted to point that out so you are not confused later. Sew up the short curved edge, clip, then open. Fold the face center in half to find the center 
and match up with the center seam that was just sewn right sides together. Then bring the face center around and match the ends up with the ends of the face side pieces. Sew around to attach. By the way, I wanted to point out because I've had some questions on this recently, the pattern does include a quarter inch seam allowance. I know most patterns are typically 5 8 inch and in the generic instructions on this pattern it even says 5 8 inch. But if you look at the pattern pieces themselves, they do have a dashed stitching line that is a quarter inch away from the cutting line. Then add the eyes and nose. I have a separate video showing up close exactly how to do this and it is linked below. And now I'm going to be 100% honest with you all that even though I have made over 50 of these bears, I sometimes still mess up. It appears that my um, head side pattern piece shifted a little before I got the eye positioning marked and that's the dots that are on the pattern pieces they note where the eyes the nose and the ears will be placed so you do want to transfer those markings onto your pieces and apparently mine got shifted just a little bit and so when I put the eyes in they were uneven and because these are child safe eyes and we've already poked the hole for them there is no fixing it so I had to remake the head um, just so that I would be happy with it it probably wasn't so bad that like anyone else would have really noticed but I noticed and so I wanted to remake it to make sure it was the best that I could do. So if you do mess up don't be too hard on yourself we all mess up on different things and so that's why I wanted to include it in the video and by the way I do use a tool for um, poking the holes in my plastic templates that I have transferred my patterns to. It is called a crop a dial and it punches through the plastic template material really easily and so I will link that and the video where I show making the plastic templates. All the links are down below, I promise. Add the ears, lining them up with the dot markings on the face center. Now it's starting to actually look more like a bear. With the head back pieces right sides together, sew up the center back seam. Put it right sides together with the face. I like to match up the ends and clip and at the very center. Then sew around to attach the two pieces. Turn the head right sides out and you have a cute little bear head. Lay each set of arm pieces right sides together and sew around leaving only the short edge open. We're not going to leave the stuffing spot open on the curved side like is done on a regular bear. Clip the seams and turn each arm right sides out. I like to smooth out the seams with my fingers after turning so they look nicer. At this point, I stuff the arms about one third of the way. They will be stuffed more later. This is just to make sure they are the correct shape when placed in the sleeves. Place one arm in each sleeve so that the hand portion is showing and looks correct to you. Finish stuffing the arms until there is about one inch left unstuffed at the end. Take it over to the sewing machine and sew each arm closed. The reason I waited to finish the stuffing until it was in the sleeve was to make sure the arm looked right inside the sleeve. At this point, the arm and sleeve are not attached. Flip up the cuff so the serging where it joins the sleeve is visible. Grab a needle and thread and use it to sew the two together, only sewing through the seam allowance and the arm where the cuff will cover it after it's flipped back down. Make sure to tie the thread off well because this is what holds the arms in place. Then 
Then flip the cuff down and it should all be hidden. Repeat for the second arm. Here's another closer look at the hand sewing I did. It's kind of a version of a catch stitch or a cross hem stitch, whatever you want to call it. At this point, I had to do a lot of figuring as to how I would get the bear sewn closed. I wanted to do as much of it by machine as possible because I wanted that nice uniform top stitch on the front, um, but there's definitely some difficulties in getting a completed outfit under a sewing machine to sew it without accidentally sewing through extra layers and sewing like the front to the back. I knew I wanted to have enough space to work and finish the rest of the bear, get the head sewn on and all of that, but not so much that I was having to hand sew like the entire front of the bear closed. I ended up closing all of the snaps except for two that were kind of in the like belly and lower chest area and kind of turning things inside out and making sure that I would have enough room to work. And it seemed to be good, so I marked with pens the area that I wanted to be left open for working with. I took it over to my sewing machine and I top stitched along the edge of the snap placket in just that area. Obviously being careful to not hit the snaps with my needle. This was to make sure that the top stitch that I'm going to use for the rest of the bear will still go in that area and not be glaringly pointing to where the hand sewing is done. Then I started sewing the legs closed. This was a bit difficult. I ended up doing it by snapping only the bottom snap on each leg together. I flipped the leg inside out and slid the leg under the presser foot of my sewing machine so that the foot was nearest to my body. And the presser foot was resting down on the good side of the fabric. I sewed through the front and back of the snap placket to sew them closed. Then I snapped the next snap up on the leg and repeated sewing from there down to where I had sewn the previous stitching line. The reason I did this in kind of small sections and um, just didn't sew like the whole leg closed all at once was because I did not want to mess this up and end up having to do any seam ripping that could damage this little outfit that I'm trying to do my best to, you know, make the most of. Um, so I did that lower portion of the leg and it went well and then I did the next section up and I continued that until both legs and the bottom of the belly section was sewn closed and despite being kind of difficult to get under the presser foot and the machine and all that it actually um, went exactly as I planned which was awesome. So I repeated this process until everything that I wanted machine sewn was sewn except for the um, neck portion. I measured around the neck opening and the bottom of the head and the neck ended up having a little bit of extra space. So to remedy this, I um, didn't snap the top snap. Instead, I offset it by a little more than half an inch, I believe, and I put a pin there to hold the layers together. I went over to the sewing machine and sewed that top section closed the same way as before, just following the edge of the snap placket, which was now offset from the actual snap. So here's how it should look with only the section in the center front and the neck open. Mark the center back on the collar and begin to pin the head in place. Since there is no real seam allowance on the sleeper, I tucked the head into the collar about a half inch all the way around. I made sure each seam of the head was matched up with a seam on the outfit as best as I could. Then flip the bear open and kind of fight with the arms a bit to keep them out of the way and top stitch around the collar to attach the head. I tried to sew about an eighth inch away from the top edge of the collar, but it probably ended up being more like a quarter inch away just because I was having a little bit of trouble maintaining a consistent seam allowance. And I really think the main theme of this whole project is just to not sew through more layers than you're supposed to be sewing through. If you sew the front to the back of the bear, it's really just going to end up flat. 
Turn the bear out to the right side and don't forget to trim off any threads as you go. All that is left is to stuff your bear and hand sew it closed. In my opinion, the bear's face and neck is the most important when it comes to stuffing. You want it to be stuffed pretty firmly, making sure to not forget the nose. If you do that well, then the rest of the bear will look great, but an understuffed face will look way less polished in the end. Remember that the original sleeper is not stabilized or interfaced in any way, so don't overstuff that part of your bear. That will cause different areas to stretch out of shape or look lumpy, and we really don't want that. Close up those last two snaps and sew closed with a ladder stitch. My ladder stitch tutorial will be linked down below along with everything else that I mentioned in this video. I also added a few whip stitches at the collar where I had crossed it over a bit to make sure it was nice and secure. I think those few stitches helped give it a nicer look too. I am very happy with how this bear turned out, especially since it is so different from any of the other ones that I've made before. Make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this tutorial, and you can click right over here to find the playlist with all of my other memory bear tutorials in it. And until next time, happy sewing.